Hello, hello, everyone. Happy Friday. Um, I'm here today with Q as usual, and Q is going to show you a little bit what uh, the product team has been working on for new reusable components that will be coming soon. So we'd love your feedback. Don't hesitate to challenge us on the design, on the uh, power uh, behind them, and, and yeah, take it away, Q. Yeah. Nice, thanks. Hello, Joel. Don't hesitate to say hello in the chat. And as Joyce said, yeah, don't hesitate to ask questions and stop us because this will be an interactive live. Everything that you will see is actually a design and not in the app yet. Hopefully, it will be shipped into production uh, early 2023 because in a few weeks, we'll all be on holidays. And I hope you too. <laughs> but yeah, like it's a big subject we're working on right now. So we would like to have your inputs because this will drastically change the way you're creating um, components inside WeWeb. And basically what we are talking about is that elements and section in WeWeb will soon disappear. And there will be only components that will be reusable. And that will be like your most basic unit to product uh, to create we web apps and as you'll see these components they, they they will behave like the way developers they are doing components so you will have your design obviously um, the html but also the logic and doing this you will be able to reuse um, and abstract all kind of things you're doing in your apps hello anthony hi anthony and also, I should say it will like uh, come after the components, but this will uh, also pave the way for the new marketplace and this marketplace that should be maybe done Q2 2023 and where you'll be able to sell those components, um, share them and also um, like sell UI kits or templates that are basically sets of components that people could reuse. So yeah. Let's dive in. Yeah. Basically, really, the, what we're hoping for is that it's um, easier for non front end people, so for back end guys and girls, uh, to make it easier for, for you to design and just for everyone as well, even designers, to make it much faster to design complex projects. Yep. Okay, let me share my screen. Screen two. Up. I hope everybody's seeing, like is able to see this design. Yep. So it's actually a Figma design for those who are interested. So it's not WeWeb yet, but soon, hopefully. Uh, so the example we'll take is that uh, we're trying to, to create a collection list of uh, cards that should display movies. A bit what like what um, our developer Damien has done with Stream Plus, you know, the app we showcased several lives ago. Uh, where it's showcasing like TV shows and uh, movies. And we're doing the same, but in this example, we want the collection list and like the cards to be reusable. So basically you do one card and all of them will be the same. So the way to do this is by going like as usual in your app, in the Canva and um, adding um, collection list. And by the way, if you see the nav bar, that's quite different. The design, uh, I mean, most some of it has already been pushed to production this week, but we are still working on the design. And you see, like the add elements and components, they will probably change in the future too to help you like uh, be more productive. So don't be afraid if it's not like exactly like we web right now, but that's how we web should look like in a in a few weeks. So we just drag and drop the collection list. We'll remove the second and third item in the list because. As you remember, when you're binding a list, like only the first item gets uh, duplicated. And what we'll do is that inside, like this first item, we'll call it card wrapper to remember that it's basically the, the div con uh, containing the whole card. And then we'll um, add a div and design the card. So here we skip a few steps because you know it for now, like it's just an image, some text, a flex box, uh, and some radius. So we've done this in our app. But what we want to do now is like we want to standardize this card um, and make it a reusable component. So to do this, you would, um, oh yeah, sorry. First, we would bind the list 
to the list of movies, so coming from any backend. Go back to the Canva and then create a component out, out of the first card. So you see here, we now have like a create a component button. And when uh, you click on it, you'll be able to create a component by specifying a name. So we'll call it card, create. And that's the whole new way, the whole new thing uh, in the future WeWeb is that you will have this Canva that looks like a bit like Figma or like if you're used to Adobe XD or this kind of like designing tools where you have only your components. You don't have like the rest of the app. Um, you can play with size, obviously, but the main idea here is to focus on the component um, and not like being overwhelmed by the rest of the app. Um, and as you see, so you, you see the document object model, the navigator for only what's inside this component. And you've got on the right sidebar properties, variables, and triggers, workflows, if I may say, that are part only of this component and that will be scoped to this component. So really like abstract, abstracting away the, um, uh, these variables and these properties to um, reuse them. Is there any question in the chat up to, up to now? Is anything unclear? We know it's a little bit uh, tough to project yourself because it's not inside WeWeb yet. It's just uh, a Figma design, but uh, is there anything that like seems, if there's anything that seems weird to you or yeah. like completely counterintuitive, uh, please let us know because you know that's the, it's a work in progress. So uh, yeah, if anything is uh, doesn't make sense at all, don't hesitate to interrupt. Basically, yeah. So here, the first thing we want to do is that we want to create properties that will be passed to the component, and basically these properties there will be. Uh, dynamic content that comes from the app that will instantiate this component. So basically here, it will be the image, the tag, like if it's a thriller, you know, comedy, this kind of things, the title and the description of the movie. So to do this, we'll go here inside the properties, create a new property. And you see here, you will have all the types that you currently have in WeWeb and that you will be able to specify as an entry point inside the component. So you see like we have text, numbers, Boolean, uh, variant. I think it's uh, like um, a set of like choices. So you would be able to say, let's say, for example, you're creating a component where you can change the, the size of a button or like the, the color of the background, but you don't want the user to put anything inside it. You would give him a choice of colors, for example, and he, will, he or she will be able to like set this color according to the value you provided. Then you've got object and array, so classic JavaScript um, uh, data types, and ima image icon or file, like if you want also to use these ones. And custom is basically do what you want, because you know we know that you want to customize this already. And actually, what, um, what is the property like image or icon or file? Is it a URL? A is it a string think, with a URL? Yeah, or? it should be a URL, I think. Uh, so basically, that's computed in WeWeb because for like JavaScript, it doesn't have any meaning. It's just a string. But we'll do some validation to be sure it's a URL, for example, or a uh, file. Okay. So here, we'll just create text. So And we're giving it a name. So here, the title, the type. The default is the value we'll see here inside when you're creating the component because the component, when you're like editing it, is not bound already to anything. So you will need a default so that we can display something. And that's also the value that will be displayed in the app if you don't bind it to anything. So it's really important to have it here. And test is like also like you can change the value uh, when typing if you want to see what it looks like, for example, with a bigger text, for example. Then we'll create another one, the description, the genre, the genre. Sorry, it's really hard to say as a French, this kind of words. <laughs> and then the image URL. And that's it. You have to imagine you're uh, an Englishman or an American or Australian or whatever saying, trying to speak French and you say genre. Genre, yeah. <laughs> They're trying to pronounce it the, the French way. Yeah. It's like when people are trying to say my name, like English people, like yeah. uh, as we say in French, impossible to say Quentin. So, but very fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, anyway, so we have these properties. Normally, we would say like on which part of the card you would apply this property. So we like uh, it's not in the design, but basically, like you would do already in WeWeb, you would say like this image URL is bound to the URL of this image. The title is here, the description is here, etc. And when you've done this, you can save the component. Joel is saying, this looks amazing. I love how you can manage components individually. So far, it looks like natural augmentation of how you would manage a component in code. Yeah, yeah, that's a nice way of putting it because basically properties, variables, and triggers, uh, by the way, there will be workflows uh, globally. That's something we forgot to design, but we'll talk about workflows later. But it's basically, basically the way developers are creating components You know, with like props, also internal variables and workflows are kind of like computed on um, methods. So like functions that will, that are part of the component. And we, tr we try to, to, to stay close to this because I think it's the way you have like the most, it's easiest to like to, to do what you want. You have like lots of options. And what we wanted to do is have like, you have the design, but also you've got also, um, we'll see this later, but you've got the, um, behavior of the component. So it's like also how it di displays, uh, what happens when you click on something, this kind of stuff. And everything is abstracted. So when you reuse the components, you don't have to know exactly what it does. You can trust um, the person who's done the component. Yeah. And I mean, Joel is a developer, so he kind of gets that logic right away. But if you're a no coder, if you're not a developer, uh, rest assured, we'll, you know, we'll walk you through it. We'll document yeah. this. And um, kind of trust us that, that if you chose WeWeb, it's probably because we're fairly close to code. Because actually, the reason we uh, WeWeb is so fast and performs well is because we're quite close to the code. Similar to, I think you can compare the approach to like uh, maybe Wix versus Webflow, uh, where we're more like the Webflow approach, where we're very close to code because we believe that if you want to build like secure web apps that scale, you need to follow web development practice, web practices, best practices. And that, yeah. like, uh, we believe as a tool, we should follow web development best practices. And we believe part of our mission is to help no coders learn how to follow web development practices. Yeah. And um, having these components set up that way instead of, um, I mean, we could have done it a hundred different ways, but this choice, even if it looks a little bit scary at the beginning, if you're a complete no coder, <laughs> In the long run, it will be worth it, and we yeah. will do our best to, you know, to help you with that for sure. And what we hope also is that with the marketplace, some people that know how to do this will be able to create components that are actually simple to use. So as a like um, someone that just who's just new to no code, you will be able to just install templates, UI kits from the marketplace, and don't have like to know this abstraction. And to gradually, maybe you will learn how to do this, and then you will be able to customize this component. But at the beginning, you will be able to use like components right off the bat by just dragging, dropping them. And you won't have to know like HTML, CSS, or like uh, JavaScript to do this. So we're kind of thinking that it could serve both uh, like uh, end of the spectrum from people that really are close to code and people that are really uh, don't know to code at all. So yeah, hopefully. <laughs> then we save the components. And so the change is uh, applied to every card in the list because basically they are the same components. So every time you're saving it, everything gets changed in your app. And we're also working on how to apply this maybe among your apps because some of your apps maybe will be using the same design system with the same component. So, and that's something actually we're interested in having your feedback on. Is like, do you want to edit all your apps? Maybe only the apps in staging. Um, maybe like doing variants, but because basically you can reuse the same design system across like a big set of projects and apps. And when you like uh, save the component, normally um, it should be saved for like updated for every project. Yeah, and. Justify HQ is saying it's the low code version of Storybook. JS. Okay, cool. Oh, at the front end, we like this because she loves Storybook. But yeah, it's kind of like 
Yeah, it's kind of like Storybook when you say it, because Storybook for the, for people who don't know is the it's a, mm-hmm. an app where you like okay. s- store your components, but when you're coding them, like in Vue or React, and you're able to reuse them right off the bat, and that's the kind of thing we're trying to do. Yeah, in no code. Yeah. Very cool. So now what I can do is that I'm back on my app and I want to bind these properties because you you see they know they are here because we created them in the component. So we would do this as we are used to do inside WeWeb. So just clicking the plug icon and choosing the right uh, data in our item in the collection list. So title, description, genre, and image. And you see, we have our list already up and working. But now, let's say we want to add some logic inside our component. Maybe because we want to add the Hatch to watch list button. And every time someone click this, we want to add, say to the backend, hey, store this movie for this user uh, to add it basically in his or her watch list. And to do this, we'll edit the component, not the app directly, because we want every card to have this behavior. So what we do is that we'll go back in the component and add a button. So I will place myself on the text to add the button after the, um, the text. And here I will go inside components because what you can do here, that's really interesting though, is that you can add another component inside a component. So let's say we, had, we created a button uh, who complies with the style of our project and has already uh, properties, for example, and triggers and workflows you can Im- uh, import this button, so this component inside your card component. So you can have like any level of nested components uh, inside each other. And it's really useful when you have like really some small, really small components like buttons, form inputs, texts that you want to standardize across all components. And then you have like big, biggest, uh, bigger, uh, more complex components like cards, forms, you know, uh, signups, this kind of things that reuse this component. So. It's really like kind of a game of like encapsulating everything. And you know, it's like the way you, you would do in code, but no code should be like this too. Like you're almost playing with, you know, Lego bricks or like, uh, I don't know if there's American, like mega blocks, I think, when you're like reusing the small sets that you already created and you don't want to like uh, recreate everything from scratch all the time. So here I will select the button for more design system. And you see it's already like designed uh, it's purple, it got, an, it got an icon, so it's because it's a component. And you see here that I can't see the document object model because it's a component. So if I were to edit this, I would go inside the button component and then I would have the screen with only my button. I don't know if it's clear. Uh, don't hesitate to stop me if it's not. But yeah. Because I know that for yeah, people that aren't used to this, <laughs> encapsulating stuff inside stuff inside stuff could yeah. be overwhelming. <laughs> but that's actually, on, on, we think on the long run, that's the way to go. Because you know that you, you have to edit uh, elements, like components, only at one place. Then I will click on my button. And you see here, I have a properties from this button. And I will bind. Uh, I will change the label. I, w- I won't bind, bind it here, but I could be able to bind it. Here, I will just change the label to add to watch list. Then I will go back on the card and I want to create a workflow that triggers when we're clicking on the button to say, hey, by the way, the button was clicked and then make it bubble up to the card. So the card will say, hey, by the way, someone wanted to add, so- uh, add something to the watch list so that in the app, we are able to do a workflow that will ping the backend. So that's the way also you would work, is that you would create a trigger on the um, smallest components, making it uh, trigger also on the biggest, the top component, and then the app will be able to react on this too. So here, I will, okay, save the component first, so you see all the buttons were added. And then I have to go back in my components, create a new trigger, call it on add. And um, actually, this 
uh, will be triggered when the button is clicked. So we'll on the button, we'll add a workflow on click that will trigger the on add from the card. So the button is click, it will trigger the on add and the card will say, yeah, I have a trigger that's on add. So you will be able to create your own triggers and you you won't be like uh, limited to what's available uh, actually, like uh, on change, on click. Um, you know, this kind of basic mm. events, you so, will be able to create your own events, yeah. So on add is an event that I created because it's like giving a name to the workflow, except I'm giving the name to the trigger? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of an abstraction over the trigger of the, because okay. in the end, it's an unclick on the button, but at the card level, when you're using card, it will be on add. And that's really useful yeah. when you're like reusing components because you will be able to say, document this and say, when something is added in the card, when something is changing, you know, and it's easier to understand that just something was clicked, but you don't know what, and you will be able to react on this. So the, is it a, when we say on add, is it a coincidence that it, it, the click on button is adding the movie to our watch list or no, because we, 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 we chose named it name. that way because, yeah. okay. We chose this name because we wanted to, okay. Yeah, you could have like uh, named That's this. That's what I thought. I whatever just you make want. Sure I'm, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> On plus so plus like, or whatever. Okay. Yeah, like a movie added to watch list. You could be really okay. explicit. Yeah. Uh, but That's, in this example. That's what I thought, yeah. but I wasn't. Yeah. yeah. Cool. No, because I can go back and, for example, um, here you see like this name triggers. Yeah. It's anything you want. Okay. But when you're creating a workflow from here, you will need like actually an event that comes from the HTML because that's how yeah. browsers work. They react yeah. on like user event, and then the to code the above door. it, yeah, is like saying, okay, this is actually a specific event that uh, was filtered. So here we'll call it on add. A bit yeah. like if people are used to Google Tag Manager segment, the way you do triggers. You always like begin with like the interacting with a user triggered event, so like just a click or I don't know, like a form input that was filled, and then you will filter according to what was inside the event. It's the same way, it's the same thing, but you're giving a name to this event. Then we save the components, and so all the components were updated, and now we have to just finish one thing, but that's specific to the app. That's why it's not in the components because the backend is specific to the app. The component has to be agnostic from it. So that's why we are adding a new workflow in the app, but on the card that will react to on add and we'll do an API call to the backend. But you see here, except it's not on click, we want to trigger on, on add. So every time some someone is like, uh, triggering on add from the card will do an API call that will update the backend. And now we have our app that is working and our component that is standardized and reusable and that we could use even reuse in other apps, for example. And yeah, I think that's the end of the demo already. Cool. I'm wondering, um, I would love to know inside the chat, like who identifies as a kind of, you know, beginner or intermediate no coder and who identifies as a developer who enjoys playing around with no-code tools. Um, because personally, I would say like I'm an intermediate no-coder and it's the, um, so it's the third time I see this demo because the first time our designer presented it when we're, all the team was together. And I, it's funny because every time I kind of understand something more <laughs> And, and yeah, I don't know. I think it's cool. And I just want to kind of reassure no coders that um, I'm insisting on this because yesterday I gave a, a, a talk at the API days conference and the talk was about building, securing web apps that scale. And I realized I was giving like um, kind of advice and sharing best practices to make sure things that seem completely obvious to developers like filtering a personal data at backend level and not at front end uh, level uh, so that the data is not available in the user's browser. And I realized that a lot of no coders uh, faced with like the more technical aspect of building an app kind of freeze. 
and underestimate how much they can learn in a few weeks time. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I'm rambling a bit, but I'd be curious to know if they're like pure no coders inside the chat yeah. uh, in the chat, or if it's all kind of developers who were triggered by, uh, by the email we sent. <laughs> yeah. Basically, did, did we make some people afraid by this? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because at because the end of I, the day, yeah. it's really logical, but it's just that, yeah, because we say that it's close to code, some people, they can just like, uh, you know, block, like, because their mental model is like, no code shouldn't be code. Yeah. But yeah, I mean. And it takes a bit of time because like the, like nesting the component, a component inside a component. Like, I think I only got it this time, honestly. I think the first oh, yeah. two times I was like, I don't know. I'll figure it. I'll, it's, it's, I'll understand I mean, later. Yeah. It's fine, you know. But, but even when I learned this, when I was like learning uh, how to code uh, components on the front end, I was like, yeah, this is taking so much time and this is yeah. boring. I don't get it. But in the end, you're like, yeah, I why wasn't using this before? Because you really can reuse. It. And the best thing is to abstract stuff like what we saw with the triggers and like the designs and stuff. Because you don't want to redo this. You don't want to have like a variant of this. Because in the end, if you're doing this, like every time you want to update something in your app, you're like, I'm screwed. I have to like change everything at every, in every place. And that's horrible to do. So that's something also, that will that, that is harder at the beginning. But on the long run, it's really cool. But also, I think it's necessary to go through that phase where you're like, oh my God, I have to update everything to understand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that was one of my points during the talk yesterday. I was like, at the moment, if you feel completely overwhelmed because there's so much advice I'm giving you, just kind of notice when you're copy pasting stuff or when you're doing the same thing over and over again. And when you notice that, ask yourself the question, like maybe I could use like this, simple formula to format currencies depending on the localization i'm using it on all my pages maybe i can have a you know write a, a global formula and or you know have a global workflow execute and i think it will be the same with components mm -hmm. uh, maybe at the beginning like when you notice that it's not you know you have to update too many times then you'll be like actually maybe i'll spend an extra 15 minutes understanding how this works so so i can kind of refactor my my code. Actually, it's cool. So Anthony says, totally clear coming from a no code position. This is fantastic to see. Um, easy initiative and easy so far, really modular. Yeah, modularity is cool. Is a big deal for us. Yeah. Mathieu is saying pure no coder here, uh, learning JavaScript. <laughs> and he, I see he totally agrees with me. So I will highlight the comment before reading. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this new design system delights me. A no coder with a strong obsession for process, dev mentality with a tech knowledge. It's funny. Um, I'd love to know your background because I used to do financial audit. So I also have a strong obsession for process. Yeah. It's funny and because Jack you said it, uh, Mathieu, but like most people, they, they think it's only tech knowledge, but it's more like the knowledge of, you know, being kind of like lazy, but, you know, in a smart way. And I tie this more to like the product mindset where you don't want to reinvent everything. Like you, you just have to build on top of other things. And it's a way to be lazy, but you know, also getting really fast, really, really far, really fast. And um, yeah, you don't need to code basically to have this mindset, I think. Jack is saying no coder will definitely help organize his work and save time. Hopefully, yeah, that's really Hopefully. the goal. <laughs> um, and I think Jack, if I'm not mistaken, you you're starting to do kind of agency freelance work as well. And Mathieu is saying he has a master in law, so yeah, similar to financial audit, it's the kind <laughs> of studies that you know make you become a bit rigid in some areas, uh, in a good way. You know? <laughs> I'm not uh, I'm not um, trolling or anything. Yeah, and every, uh, yeah. anybody could learn, you know. So don't yeah, be afraid. Yeah. I've done marketing studies, so I'm not a coder at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's funny because some of the discussions on the no-code track at the API Days conference in Paris yesterday was about, um, you know, saying that no-code is easy, and it's not easy. Um, you know, you you still you still need time to learn, and 
Uh, I think sometimes one of the one of the points of the speaker was that saying that it's easy is actually counter counterproductive, because then when a no coder struggles, uh, they think, "Oh my God, I'm not I'm not able to do this, even though it should be easy." Mm. Um, and it, it, it isn't easy, you know. It's you have to learn these things. Um, but yeah. personally, I think they're worth learning. I have a, I have Thanks. a saying that I'm using a lot of like. Uh... But actually, in no code, but in other stuff too, it's like it's simple, but it's not easy. You know? so yeah. like the way you 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 kind of like wrap your hand your head around it. It's simple, but like the implementation shouldn't be easy, and that's the point. Because I mean, if you want to do like big stuff that scales and actually a complex project, it's never easy. But it should, it should always be simple, like the way you get to it and i think components are also an answer to this because components they are simple but when you're like mix them together it can become like really a big a big thing and uh that's not easy but that's simple to do at the beginning <laughs> and hi xavier hi and jack is saying yeah he started freelance work and i think for like for freelancers or agencies it's going to be pretty cool because you can you can like Uh, use components to build up your client's design system, and yeah. then you can apply. Uh, you know, you can apply that design system to multiple projects. So if you're working with a brand, you know, you can. When you sit, when Q showed you how to save the components, you can choose to apply yeah. it to all all that client's project, but not other clients' projects, obviously. Yeah, because uh, you so could totally be hear. Yeah, go to your components and like make your even your client drag and drop like the cart, you know, and bind it yeah. because that's pretty easy to do. And we want to to help on this, and uh, especially if you you want to hand off to your clients, because you will still be here to manage the complexity and what's happening behind the scenes. But they will be able to use WeWeb only like a club. I mean, almost like Wix, like drag and dropping stuff that you created. So yeah, but with full control of how it works. Yeah, then you can still change everything. You're not tied to a specific design like other tools on the market, for example, where it's really like opinionated. This is opinionated, but because you chose the way it should be opinionated. So, and you can always change it. And Xavier, how are you doing? Did you get home safely from the conference yesterday? <laughs> where was the conference? It was at the Cité des Sciences in Paris. So oh, for, nice. for those who don't know, it's a, it's a really nice, it's a huge place in Paris uh, where people who grew up in Paris usually have been there as kids because they have a lot of, um, um, like, um, how do you say that? Uh, kind of shows for kids that, where you can, you can play around with scientific stuff and, like, discover... Um, I don't know, physics and aerial space and stuff like that. It's pretty cool as a kid and as an adult as well, actually. <laughs> and it was nice because there was uh it was over several floors. I got some oh, let me show you. I'm so happy. I got some postman socks. They're my new favorite socks. <laughs> so um and uh yeah, so it's API days. I think they have conferences all over the world. Uh they have uh yeah. I know they have one in New York. Um Really cool. It was my first time attending, and this year they had a, a special NoCo track, so it's over three days. And yesterday uh, there was one room uh, dedicated to NoCode, uh, which is really cool. I think it's a sign of times, and and it was interesting because we had um, we had talks uh, about security, about scaling, about versioning, about testing. Testing is a big deal in NoCode. We don't really have yet um, great tools to um you know to to code no code on different branches and then and then merge we don't really have any great tools to to test um in advance so that was very interesting um there were talks on you know diversity and inclusion in in, in the no code space as well um it was cool and all those talks actually were recorded so the the videos will be av available and yeah Nice. Um, so question is this feature live no this was a design and hopefully it will be live early 2023 uh, I would say yeah I'd like to take a conservative approach because that's a big feature for us so I would say February if we're good uh, I would say before. later no 
an event March, yeah. I think it's Q1 2023, but yeah, the time to test it and stuff, yeah. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I think it's March, a huge... Yeah. Yeah. We can be, yeah, because it's a huge <laughs> deal. And actually, that's why we, uh, the product team, Q, made the decision to uh, to share with you today is to get your feedback and kind of challenges. And, um, and yeah, I think for this one, we'll probably do some um, alpha testing with some, yeah, we'll release uh, some it, users uh... before... With some of you, uh, by the way, if you want to participate, just ping us uh, because we'll begin to beta test, alpha test, even like features with some uh, core users now before releasing it. And yeah, if you want to try it before everybody else, just ping us and we'll get you, you an invite on the beta workspace uh, inside WeWeb. Should people email you? Is that the easiest way to ping you? Yeah, they can email me at uh, Quentin at WeWeb.io. I'll share the... Yeah. I'll, share. I'll answer to Jack. Any quick updates on Xano Social of our unique dynamic collection URLs? Uh, I don't know what you mean by unique dynamic collection URLs. We just uh, released to production parameters like... in URLs. So maybe that's what you're talking about. So basically you can use like... Uh, I can show you, by the way it works i have a project using this so let me share my screen and let's go back inside the beast okay so sorry i took a project in french but it will understand so here oh yeah i'm not sharing my screen sorry so here i have a project with a collection list and actually all these uh cards they have a workflow to redirect to a property page. And you see, it's a page where, where I'm sending um, an ID as a parameter that's bound to the ID of my actual uh, card. And this ID is not a query string anymore. It's like in the URL. So if I show you the property page, you see here now in URLs path, you can add variables. So like here, ID with a default of two, but could be like another variable called, I don't know, Toto, because we love Toto at WeWeb. And you can have like any number of parameters. And this is basically in the URL. So when you're going to, if I'm going to the property page, in the editor, it will be a query string, but on production, it will be like slash property slash two or slash three slash four. And the way you use it, for example, I've done a workflow on page load, it's getting the right property by using the variable from the path. So from the URL here. And see, it's not a, like this is the URL that's getting pinged. This is the URL, like the page is also slash property slash two. So it's not a query string anymore. So it's better for like user accessibility, SEO, all this kind of stuff. And yeah, that's how it works. So it's Do been released, but the changelog, uh, the changelog and the docs, they are coming next week because yeah. I'm a bit late for this. Sorry. <laughs> That you can use it already. And Zano Social Auth, I think uh, you have an update on that as well. Zano Social Auth, sorry, uh, I found a bug during the testing, so it's getting back to development, but should be released next week. Uh, so yeah, but it's it under well. heavy development because I've been on this ticket already three times this week. <laughs> but it's a big subject, so we want to re-release it without any bugs. That's why. And Anthony had a, a question as well. How nested can we build the component within the component? Might be a silly question, but can we embed a HTML element into a component if you wanted all your clients to use the same HTML embed? Uh, so on the nestedness question, you can nest like any number of components you want. I think past a certain level, it will get complex to maintain, but you could have like a thousand if you want, <laughs> but don't do this, but you could. <laughs> and for like the embed HTML, one thing we're, we, we are thinking about is that when you're creating, you know, custom components using code, you've got, you can use uh, one of our special components that call a drop zone, letting people drag and drop uh, elements from WeWeb inside it. And we'll let you, maybe it could be the same with HTML, uh, if that's your question, but we'll let you also use the drop zone inside the no-code component so that, for example, if the card, if I were to put the drop zone after the text, people, they could be able like to drag and drop buttons or HTML or like 
titles. And this will be like different for every instance of the components. I'm wondering if your use case, Anthony, is embedding an iframe, for example, for a YouTube video or something like that. If that's your use case or if you were thinking of something else. Or what you could do in your use case is just having like HTML, like uh, custom HTML element inside your component and making it bindable, the source, so that the, your like user is able to bind the value of the iframe of the HTML every time you're using the component. And that would work also. Nice. OK. No more Do questions. You, if you have more questions, we can hang out a bit longer. If you yeah. don't, we can uh, we can stop hanging out. <laughs> that works as well. No question at all. <laughs> all right, cool. Um, I don't know if you remember, but actually, a couple of weeks ago, we teased we teased uh, Joel's project. Joel. Um, built an NFT generator in uh, WeWeb um, for that during the hackathon. And we wanted to showcase it today, but I completely forgot. So then we started promoting this live uh, for components. So I asked Joel, <laughs> which was uh, very kind, and he accepted to... Um, My fault. Sorry, Joel. To... <laughs> uh, so we postponed to January, uh, but we haven't forgotten. And we will show you because it's pretty cool. Uh, actually, maybe I can uh, just find the URL quickly to sh share it with you again, uh, because it's actually in production. So you can you can start minting NFTs on. It's really fun. Um, I enjoyed it a lot, and it's pretty. Uh, let me see if I can share. Yeah, it's this one. So yeah, we'll show it. Uh, we'll show it uh, in January, and. I think <laughs> thanks, nice. Agile, for understanding. Um, and yeah, I think otherwise we'll leave it at that for for today, unless you have any other uh, quick question. But I think we're we're good to go. Yep. See ya then, right. and have a have great a nice weekend. weekend everyone. Bye.